Hi everyone, it's Diane. It's time for another episode of Let's Use It. And the supply we are going to use today is playing cards. Uh, I'm looking for my list of names. Before we get going on this project, I want to say hello and thank you to a couple of my subscribers who watch very often and comment very often. So I want to say hello to Peggy and Kimberly. Thank you ladies for your support of my uh, channel. Really, really appreciate it. So I do have a lot to cover in this episode because I came up with quite a few ideas for using playing cards. I have a wide assortment of designs on playing cards and I'm including uh, game cards also in this because I have, you know, the old children's game cards and things like that. But uh, I do try to limit how many I keep on hand. I have this vintage sewing machine drawer and it has my postcards and my playing cards and game cards. And I don't want to outgrow this box. I do keep the littler ones go down on this side. They'll just fit in there nicely. So I can kind of, I can pack them in there pretty good. But I don't use them in a lot of different ways. And I thought it was time to investigate different ways to use them. I will take them, <coughs> sorry, uh, and just sew one to the edge of a page. And it's just an embellishment or it can be a tuck spot. I do that quite often, especially if it's a flap. If I have a flap page, I like to have a card or something sewn on there. But I do it on like this also. But I wanted to come up with some different ways. So I'm going to just get these out of my way and I will show you some samples of what I did. I won't be demonstrating all of them because I think they're simple enough that you will know just by looking at them how to do it. So let's see what I have here. I was up in the night. I could not sleep. Typical of me, right? So another thing I have done before is to sew lined paper to the back so you can write on them. So I did about five of them, just took some scraps, and uh, I think everything I did <coughs> for these cards last night was using scraps of lace and scraps of paper. So I just sewed a piece of paper to the back and then embellished with a little bit of lace. Some of them are like a little pull tab. And just one of them is just, I love that. And I only had one of each of these. I must have gotten them in a happy mail. They are so pretty. I think I got all of these cards in a happy mail right here. So these can be fun just tucked in a pocket and you pull them out and write on the backs. So that's very, very simple. Uh, the thing is, I did put a little bit of glue in the center to hold the paper in place. And when it dried, I took it to the sewing machine. I do want to point out, I'm not going to be at the sewing machine today, so I just want to tell you, when you do sew a playing card, they are glossy on the back, and so they don't get a very good grip. And so you have to be prepared to help them get started to push push it or pull it um, to just to get it started, and then it, and then it will run smoothly. Just wanted you to know that. Um, I took I have a pile of pages here of pages that were started for other journals and then not used. So I got this pile of papers out, figuring I could use those as demonstration pages, and then they'll be all ready to go into a journal. So I had this copy dyed page. And uh, it was already folded and cut and ready to go into a journal, and it didn't get used. But I wrapped a doily, a little doily, at the bottom like that. Just wrapped it right around, folded it, and I had I sewed this. I, I had glued it to the back. I glued the back of the card to the doily, and then I sewed it all together there. And then added this little pansy for a, an embellishment that's just a fussy cut. From a digital and then this can be used as a tuck spot. I took this digital card that I have also a pansy and I have it glued in the center to this vintage paper that came off out of a book, an old book, and I will sew around it and that will go right in there. And uh, a cousin or a twin brother, it's that close, 
to that idea is this one, which is just using the doily on the side of the page. I did a, a little bit more fancy here. I It's a bigger doily, and I had this die cut in my stash, and I folded that, and it's a, it's a cardstock, so it's nice and sturdy. And then I... I did not glue her down, I just sewed it here. So it can be a tuck here of something small. And nothing is, all three of these layers are not connected, they're all separate. But I would just tuck that in there probably. And I just sewed them all together and added that yellow lace. And I have a pretty um, postcard tucked in there. So you could turn playing cards into a pretty tuck spot. You could do it without the doilies. You just add add a playing card. Back it to cardstock if you want to or not. Just make it a small tuck spot. So playing cards as journal cards and playing cards as tuck spots. For this one, I took a scrap of paper and I just decorated it as a pocket. And of course, this is just treating the playing card just like any other image that you might have cut out of a book or from a digital or something you stamp. So I just collaged with a playing card. And um, I think you can tell it's a playing card, but it doesn't really have any of the, you know, the playing card side showing. But that's a pretty way to use a pretty image if you have an image that you really like on the playing card. This one we will do, I, this, I have a sample of this one, and these are three Virginia Slims playing cards with these ladies. So this is the, the playing card side because they had the ladies on them. Uh, these are the face cards, obviously. The Queen, the Jack, and a Queen of Clubs. And I thought they were fun. Um, so I'm going to show you how I did that. It's really quite easy. I don't, I'm not at the sewing machine, though, so... <clears throat> I'm just going to glue them. So I have these two. A lot of times you can get cards in two set, in a set of two different designs that go together. Um, so I wanted three. So I found this one that I thought went really well with those two. So I have this scrap of paper that came from... <coughs> sorry. A vintage little... Well, not very vintage, but it's a little planner or appointment book or something. I'm just going to trim off that little edge. And it's just been in my stash of scraps of writable paper. Paper that has room to write. And it was just the right size to make this little accordion fold. So I arranged them. I think I trimmed a little more off of the other one because this is it's got a little more room than I need. So I'm going to glue. I'm going to start with the center one. <clears throat> and if I want to, I can go back in later and sew around it once the glue is dry. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just gluing it. Make sure there is a little space in between the cards so that you can fold. And while this glue dries, I'm going to set it aside before I fold it. And we'll let the glue dry. And we'll talk about other embellishments and ephemera that you can make with your playing cards. I love this set. I was so I remember finding this this set and I remember just being so thrilled with it. And I still love it. I don't buy playing cards very often. They have to be very special anymore because, like I said, I try to keep my stash limited. So if I do bring in more, because I absolutely love the design, and I don't sell them much in my shop because they're just not an item that sells quickly, um, I will often put them in little packets and include them as a bonus in my Etsy orders. I'm going to set that aside to make sure that that glue dries. And we'll do another one. How about this one? So I, you saw that I used my uh, die cut on the one 
on this one. This happened to be a die, a die cut that I had in my stash, which is great. It's great to have an assortment of die cuts, Cricut cuts, whatever you have to cut things out with um, as so that you can just play and not stop. I wouldn't have gone in my office and done this cutting last night. So it was nice to have the pieces already. I pulled out some other pieces that I might be able to use. So I'm going to talk about that using die cuts. So I have this piece. I stamped a plaid stamp on it in a blue. So it's subtle because it's blue on blue. I inked it and then I put this fun um, old maid card with the wavy border. I put that on there and then just decided to add um, a piece of doily for an embellishment. So I have this one. I think it's the same same size, same shape. I didn't pick a card out for it. I could use the wavy old maid card again or any other card that I like. I guess I like the wavy, wavy border with that shape. Jumping Jack is cute. I'll be able to show you all of these ideas in one video. So this could end up being just a journaling card that you put into a pocket, or I will probably use it as a tuck spot. And I inked the border of the card also. And I'll use the same plaid stamp. I thought that worked really nicely. Where did I get this stamp? I don't remember. I didn't used to have it. So I don't know if it was a Happy Mail or if I got it at a thrift store or flea market because I didn't buy it new. I know that. But I know I was very happy to have it because I'd been wanting plaid other projects and so now I have one. I'm just going to clean the blue ink off of this because I didn't clean it last night. That's a lot of blue ink. This pack is all dried up. It was in my car. So I could, you know, wipe my dashboard and stuff. And it's been in there too long, and it's dried up. So I brought it in here. I know I will use it in here. Sorry about taking the extra time for that. I didn't have it ready. I'm going to use early espresso. I think that's a nice dark brown. It's from Stampin' Up. I'll lay this down on top of it. And so that I don't get ink on my fingers, paper towel that I use. Oh, I see it. Didn't have a scrap paper ready. You can see I used that with the blue yesterday. We have a nice plaid background. And I'm just going to glue him but I might sew around it later. I did sew around her. And 
then I can add an embellishment to that later also. It doesn't have to be a, a dimensional. It can be a piece of a, just a little piece of ephemera scrap of something. But I won't bother looking for something like that now because you get the idea of how to make a tuck spot with a cute card and <clears throat> some cardstock. So while I was looking for those pieces of ephemera, I found these also and thought I could play with these. I had this <clears throat> cut and I thought she would look really pretty looking through that pane of glass or maybe this one. I like this one because it's purple and and I would put this vellum, this purple vellum behind it to look like the stained glass. These two came in the same, they were uh, in the same box of cards like I was just talking about. So I'm going to glue this. I need to put glue on the center three posts, so to speak, and the bottom, and a little bit up here. And I'm not sure if the uh, that other glue, art glitter glue, would work on the glossy card. So I'm, it might, but I haven't tried it. So I'm just using my Fabri Tac. I want to make sure I have her in the frame the way I want her. So basically. For some of these, I'm just treating them like uh, just another image that I have in my stash. You can't tell that they're a playing card, really. But we'll be doing more. Uh, the other ones that I showed you, you can tell they're playing cards. Got some glue on the outside of that. I am going to use art glitter glue now because it's just easier to use on these narrow spaces. I can put the fabric tack on the playing card. And then what would I do with this? It could be a pocket or a tuck spot. finally getting some rain. We've been very dry. I was, today's Monday, the day I'm filming this. So I woke up and it was raining and I thought, well, no flea market today. And I was going to go to Horseheads after the flea market because I'm on my vacation. I'm just, this isn't work, this is playing. Even though I'm making a video. I figured I'd make a couple videos while I'm on vacation. But uh, I was going up to Horseheads today after the flea market, but I don't want to drive in the rain. I didn't sleep well last night, so I just decided to make this a stay-at-home day, except I went out and got my groceries because I didn't get groceries last week and I really needed some. So it's not raining hard, but it is raining, and I'm glad. So we have a little stained glass. It'd be fun to have a, a piece of vellum with more vibrant colors. I could use alcohol ink to do that, but I just wanted to do something quick today. But isn't that pretty? And it's 
the cardstock around the edges of it makes it sturdy enough it could be a tuck spot or even a pocket if you glued it down on both sides you could put a narrow card in there not not necessarily this I'm just showing you that it would fit it, isn't that pretty I love it so I might make some more of those I only had the one cathedral window punched out or die cut so I might go back and make some more of those because I have this card I could use I think they're pretty um, and also where my other die cuts go here this is a die cut with a window, and this one is a die cut with a window. Oh, they, these are Cricut cuts, actually. That's too big. The image is too big. That would be cute. I'm trying to decide if I would cut that or I think I would so I would cut that oval out a little bit bigger than the hole and then maybe back it back this whole piece onto a piece of cream colored cardstock and glue it and then cut it out and that way you'd have the cream color behind those and then you'd have a place to journal on the back I'm not going to take the time to do that right now because I have other things to show you. But of course you could do something similar with that piece. Let's come back to this. I'm sure it's dry now. I'm just going to trim this one end off. And then I just folded this one back and folded this one forward. Fold a little crooked. Maybe I glued the card on a little crooked. And then I just took a piece of scrap uh, boho, boho lace. It's got some sequins on it. And I just had that one little scrap and I sewed it to this end, this edge. And then you can just open it up like that. How fun! and journal on all of that space. So one, the size of a playing card gives you that much journaling space, which is awesome, and that many pretty images to look at. So I will um, probably sew around those, and I will definitely add some trim to the edge there. have this card I only have the one that had the hole cut out and I thought well that would be awesome to just have this this is a digital trading card I think these both are from tailor-made craft or tailor-made journals had them for a long time you get a huge um, amount of pages when you order anything from her digitals so I thought I could put that there and then cover the back of it with that. So there's no no writing space on it. It's just a decorative card. But you can see that it is a playing card. And I only have the one, like I said, but you could take any playing card. So if you have plain cards that don't have the pretty pictures on them, you could um, punch a hole in the center. Or if you have a die cutting machine, you could get a small die and cut a shape out and cut a window. And then you don't have to back it with something like that. I do like one. I do like having the number show so you know that it's a playing card. But you could just cover the whole thing with uh, writing paper. But I'm going to do it this way. glue this down.
and then I could put a tab on it or I think it would look really cute with a little tassel hanging off it but then it wouldn't go in maybe if you um, clipped it to a page <clears throat> but at least a tab lace tab or some sort of tab on it that's cute or I could put an eyelet on it and hang a bulb pin with a, a charm or a bead on it I think that would look prettier with this lady image in there and I wanted to show you this I have these three uh, round cards I have the Florida orange ones and then I have I've got a whole bunch of those I have a couple of patterned ones I don't know what happened to all the rest of these I used to have more and I know I put some in bundles but I don't think I would have gotten rid of all of them but anyway I've got those um, so I took three of the orange ones just because there are three of them I'm going to wipe this glue off and I used my two and a half inch circle punch and punched a scrap of um, yellow lined paper so they are covered on the back but it's not it doesn't completely cover them I wanted you to see that they were playing cards so what I'm going to do with these is um, put them together with brads got some brads right here I picked out some orange ones and I want them to be like a little cascade and I thought I would put one the one in the middle facing out so you could see the playing card and then like that and you'll be able to write on all the sides so I'm going to I'm just going to put them together and poke the hole and I don't really care if they're right side up or what I'm just going to poke a hole and hope that this works I didn't do a sample one I have done something similar with circle shapes in a journal before, not with playing cards. And I will show you how it would work on a journal page. You could tuck it into a pocket, of course, but I think it's fun to have it just attached to the page. Oh, I didn't punch a circle in the on this one. How would you do that on a page? I'm going to attach it to this one. I don't know if it's going to stay here. It is, it's just the right length. I'm just going to attach it to the top of the page. And I didn't get an extra brad out for that. I'm going to use a bigger brad, I think, for the top. Let's try this pretty bright now. Is that? Let's try it. It's a big yellow one. Okay. Um, because that's a bigger um, prong, I'll use my punch for that. You can do this with any round thing. You don't have to have playing cards. I don't see round playing cards all the time. 
So the reason I'm using a bigger brad is it's decorative. And also, I think it would be easier to take it off and put it back on. I'm not going to cover the prong there because I want you to be able to pull this off and write on your pieces. So it can be tucked up. A uh, smaller brad would work if you wanted to tuck it all the way up. Or you can leave it hanging down like that. I just think it's a fun element to add. Um, I'm not done yet. I took these little miniature cards. And this is a children's playing game. Uh, game card game. And I had this little scrap of scrapbook paper. It looks like brown barn wood. And I just glued them on there. I sewed some trim to the edge of it first. And then glued them on. And this can be a side tuck on a page. Well, let's see. Here's one. Just glue it right there. And have a pocket there. It's just the right size, too, for that page. And got that stuck on the paper clip. I'll get that off later. All right, so I took uh, two globe playing cards, and I had this strip of coffee dyed craft um, glassine, and I folded it accordion style and just attached the cards to the front and back. So let me see if I have another piece of that I can use. These are scraps, these are all scraps. But you don't have to. I had an extra. Oh, because I only needed two. I got out three, and I only needed two. All right. Um, let's let's do some money. So I want to have the card so I know how to fold it. it has to be folded small enough to fit within the perimeter of the card. So I'm just going to fold that right there and the rest I don't need the card for. Try to fold it straight and then fold it back and forward. So any long strip of paper you have you can uh, glue the ed ends together if you have smaller strips of paper. This side is going to be a little shorter than the others, but that is fine. Worked out that way here. So it's just, it doesn't cover up as much of the card. Now we're going to glue it to our money. going to put the glue on the paper itself because if I put it on the card I would probably have some glue exposed and then I'm going to lay the card on top make sure I have it centered <coughs> and again put the glue on this paper See how quick and easy this is? That is not the right one. Here's the money. And if, if you do it while it's all folded up like that, you have the cards lined up. You can open it out to dry if you want to do that, in case some of the glue seeped. But that is just a really fun and easy uh, embellishment, and I figured I would take a cord and tie it around there. I 
got a green cord I can use for the money. And if you want to, you could actually glue that there, or you could um, zigzag stitch it before you glue the card down, if you wanted to. And I probably would make it long enough to tie a bow so you don't have to untie a knot every time. I'll use this yellow for the globe because there is a little bit of yellow in there. Oops. And then cut the strings where you want them and put a knot in the end of the string so they don't unravel. But that is a fun journaling spot right there. And I have one more. If I can keep these all together so we can review at the end of this video. I'm kind of just throwing them here and there. Good. I've got a nice pile of them. Uh, I had these that are um, digitals. I'm not using any, doing them today, but I pulled them out when I was looking for the die cuts. Um, but I thought these might make a good background too. So look at your digitals. If you've got some already cut, look at your die cuts. Um, look at your scraps of paper and just play with your playing cards. This would be just a cute little way to embellish it. And... Uh, just glue it to a page for an embellishment. But the last thing I wanted to show you was this one. That's where she belongs. She belongs here. Um, I did not prep pages for the inside of this. I forgot about that, but I'm going to just make this into a booklet. I have this scrap of really heavy-duty um, patterned paper. This is, I believe this is... Um, Blue Fern, Blue Fern Studios. Yes, it is. So I'm just going to put matching cards or coordinating cards on the front and the back. And I would cut pages to fit in here and make it just a little booklet. I could round the corners. I want to, this is the, what do you call it, the branding strip. So I want to cover that. But it wouldn't be tall enough if I um, cut it off. And I think this will just add a nice uh, extra decorative edge to it. This is from a magazine and it's got Pioneer Woman written on it and that would show. But I really like that so I'm going to use it. And I could just put some washi tape on top of that, where it says the Pioneer Woman. You could add other embellishments to this. You could put something behind, um, some tulle or lace or cheesecloth behind the cards. 
or put some trim along the edge, which is probably what I will do. Just probably won't do it in this video. And then cut some pages to fit in there and sew them right there, either by machine or with a pamphlet stitch. I should put the washi tape down before I put her down. Looking for the right color of washi tape. How about this? too dry now. Maybe not. It was crooked. that and you could also on this attach a ribbon here on the spine and have something to tie it close once you have your pages in there or you could just put um, some writing space on on the inside and you don't need to put pages in it I would probably put a little writing card on the inside and add pages so you have lots of writing space so let's quickly go through the ideas that we talked about today. We have the booklet. We have an idea of cutting a hole out of the center of your card, which I got that idea because this was already cut, and then putting some image in there to show through. The little accordion booklets, which gives you quite a bit of journaling space. pocket with miniature cards. That goes there. Uh, this circle one that is super fun. These little tuck spots or journaling cards. This is another form of an accordion fold. It's only got three panels. I love that because I love those cards. And here it is finished with the tab. And using die cuts that you might have. If you don't have this one, perhaps you have something else that you could just go check out your dies and see what you have that you could play with with playing cards can even see the card through that but I would probably glue this down as a tuck spot and that I'll make another one with that and um, tuck spot with a doily on the side of your page it um, creates a doily on the back side too you could put another playing card there if you want to or just um, add something else there here's a pocket with a playing card on it and the simple thing is just adding writing space to the back of your card and adding a little lace if you want to with some sort of a tab. You could punch a hole in there and add an eyelet and dangle things from it or put um, baker's twine or ribbon through it. I should have done some of those, some like that. And then um, another tuck spot with a doily but at the bottom of the page. You could do that at the top, have a card the other way, of course, and tuck something something in like that. It holds it pretty well. 
So that's quite a few ideas that we got in in 45 minutes. I hope you saw something that you would like to try and uh, I hope that you get your stash of playing cards out and give it a try. Now, before we go, we must draw for the next supply that we'll be using. And I did not add, I added to my list, but I didn't add to my little cut papers. So I'll have to do that before the next time. But we'll just pull from this. If it's a repeat, because this is my third one, so if I have a repeat, I'm gonna put it back and pull another one. So let's see. Next time we will do vocabulary cards. So I have quite a selection of the small little vocabulary cards in different languages. So I will have to come up with ideas to use those for. And that's good because I, I love them, I have them, but I don't get them out and use them, which is the whole point of this series. I hope you're enjoying this and I hope you play along with me. Um, if you can, send me some pictures of uh, some items. How about, I don't even know how to do a hashtag. I really don't. If I just say, let's do a hashtag, let's use it. Um, and then you, you, and you do that, you put a hashtag, let's use it on your Instagram or YouTube or photo or whatever, Facebook, I don't know. How does it work? Because I'd like to see what you do. So maybe I'll go back and do a hashtag Let's use it for the wrapping paper and the, what did I use first? Oh, the book illustrations and then this. And, and um, you tell me how to do it. <laughs> I don't know how to make a hashtag. So anyway, I, I had fun playing with my playing cards today. I hope you did. Hope you're having a creative day today. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.